Next question is from Shrumpf836. When trying to gain strength, is it beneficial to stay in the three to five rep range for all of your lifts or just the core lifts? Okay, so let's assume that you're uh, phasing your workouts. Okay, so let's assume that you go three to five reps, but then after you know a little while, you might go to higher reps so that you can not allow your body to plateau. Um, the low rep ranges are good for maximal strength. Not all exercises, though, lend themselves well to really low reps. So what I mean by that is like deadlift, bench press, squat, um, overhead press. Those work really well for like the three Combat to five lifts. rep range. Yeah. Isolation exercises, not so much. Like curls and laterals and you know leg extensions and stuff like that. They don't lend themselves well because the uh, – not saying that you can't do this, but most people lack the control – the stability and the form to be able to produce a good technique with heavy weight with like a lateral. If you do like three reps with a lateral, it ends up looking like uh, like a clean. Well, it, it, last time we, we talked about this like a year or two ago, and it, a lot of people, it confused a lot of people because then, then they thought that like we're saying that there's no value at all in doing like six reps of a bicep curl or doing some of these isolation exercises. There There is value in it, but the point that you're trying to make is, is exactly that, is most people, when you're doing something like a lateral raise or doing a small isolation movement, you can't help but allow the dominant muscles to take over when you lift a really, really heavy load. So yeah. you you just got to find, I think the key is, is finding a, a heavy enough load that you can still maintain and be in control. The problem is what people end up doing is they go to a heavy enough load that they can still perform the movement, but what ends up happening in the movement they end, the bigger muscles take over. I love mm -hmm. to talk about the rear delts with this. This is like one of the things that I struggled with for a long, long time. And so do I saw a lot of like competitors that I'd be helping with. When they go to train rear delts, it's really hard to not let your upper back take over the movement. The upper back is a much bigger, stronger, dominant part of your body than the little rear delt is. And so here you are trying to do a rear delt exercise and, you know, the macho kid in me would want to keep increasing weight, keep increasing weight, but then now it's turned into a back exercise and it's not really a rear delt exercise. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that going heavy, lifting heavy for my rear delts is bad or doesn't, isn't, isn't a good idea. It's that when most people go heavy, on those small isolation movements, they they can't help themselves but to allow their bigger, more dominant muscles to take over. So if you are going to load those isolation exercises, you you got to be careful with can I do perform the exercise or can I keep the the, the movement focused on that small muscle the entire time? Because you can load it just fine and and find. A, a really challenging five to six reps with those isolation exercises, but you can't you can't let yourself get caught up and oh I can add ten more fifteen more pounds just because the body can actually use some body English to yeah. get it through. I, Does that make sense? I rarely it makes perfect sense, and I I rarely go lower than five or six reps for isolation exercises. Rarely, like I'll do singles all the time for bench press, squat, deadlift, overhead press, no problem. I almost never do a, a curl for one. Yeah. You know, or a lateral for one. It just doesn't lend itself well. Not saying you can't, but you got to really, I mean, you got to be perfect form. Yeah, without compensating at all. I mean, it's, yeah, that that's it, it's just difficult. I, I get what you're saying. I, I think there's a way to do it in terms of like picking the right load. Um, but in, in terms of like, you know, isolation exercises, the best value to those typically is, you know, a higher rep range. Well, we just got to remember that. And this, it's funny because early in the intro, we talked about the brain. The brain operates the same way as the body does. We're, it's lazy by nature. So it is always going to take the easiest path. So if you do a movement and you are trying to, to do it to work a small muscle, the, the body doesn't work that way. It's going to use everything it can it to wants help. efficiency. Yeah, exactly. It wants to be efficient. It's lazy by nature. And so you've got to be at a pretty advanced lifter to be able to take a movement that is for a very small muscle and it's an isolation exercise and load it really heavy. And that's the reason why on the show, we, we typically tell people not to do that. And and that's what happened last. We had this conversation a year ago, and then we got all these people that want to come on and debate over. And it's like, listen, nobody here is saying that you can't load an isolation exercise heavy and get benefit from it. It's that the average person doesn't know how to, to, to delineate from their body being lazy and taking the easy path versus the, the right one that's going to give them the best bang for their buck.